one thing that I've learned as a mother through this whole journey is I shouldn't have been as anxious as I was. None of the things that I was scared of ever came true. It's the anxiety that I wish that I could have been a little bit more relaxed. Um, and that would have made TESFA a lot more relaxed as well. TESFA is my son. We have had him in our family for 13 years. He is adopted uh, from Ethiopia. Uh, we have his sister as well. The diagnosis came to us after we had tests for about four months. The research I did was shocking, so I got the worst picture. I was diagnosed around the age six. And I used to, maybe, I used to find it hard to run, walk, and I used to get frustrated because I couldn't keep up with other kids. And I used to get angry too. I want to help me to get through my get get through my disability and my uh, Duchenne is God. I have a faith in God and in family that loves me and friends friends as well and school community. I knew a little bit about the circumstances uh, that brought Tesla to us. To be honest with you, I was a little bit worried about how he would be received here um, because we'd never had anything. Uh, we've, never, we've never had a student with so many needs before. But within a very short period of him arriving, I realised, you know, we'd spent all of this time preparing for him, putting in ramps and, and platforms and modifying timetables so he could get access to the rooms that he needed. That caught me off guard. Um, how much impact he would have on us. Nobody in this school thinks that I'm, I'm a person in a wheelchair. They think I'm, a, I'm just a person like them. They don't really see my wheelchair or anything. This doesn't make up who I am. It just, this is just like a big call for me. So. so one of the blessings, I think, has been his friends. There are some things that they do with Tesfa that I don't want to know what they do. Um, <laughs> because they only show me photos afterwards, uh, but he loves it. And it gives him in his, his life, I guess, his individuality, his experience. One of the most difficult things with Duchenne's boys is the parents having to physically handle the child all the time. So it, 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 that, that closeness the physical closeness can get a little bit too much for a teenager, for instance, um, where you, you have to be able to s separate a little bit because the, the, the nature of a human doesn't change just because you have a phys physical disability. We went to a, um, a training course in Sydney for NCCD, which is the way that the government funds uh, students with disabilities. We use TESFA as um, an example of a particular um, disability level. And I said, are you having to open his lunchbox? Are you having to peel fruit for him? Are you having to do all of these things? And we're saying, no, no, no. And it was causing us to wonder, well, wonder whether we've put him into too high a category. But then we realised that the reason we weren't doing these things is because the students were doing it for him. He'd never had to come and ask us. I think any disability, people, people with disability that get help, they probably want to do them, do it themselves, you know what I'm saying? They, they probably wish they could have done it themselves, but, but that's, not, that's not the real, reality. You can't, you, can't, you can't just ignore it. You have to leave you. You can't ignore the reality. You can't just, just like, ah, oh, no, it's, it's just not happening. Because <laughs> the reason with the people, you have to realise that you, the reality is that you need help. I think that if I said that I wouldn't want it any other way, maybe it's a bit of a, you know, maybe people say that, but it's actually true. I, from our point of view, we wouldn't change anything. I, I'm not going to make, belittle that and say, oh no, Tesla wouldn't want it different either, I'm sure he would. But I think that he also is realising that he is, that he has a purpose. He has a massive purpose and he's a, an absolute blessing to everybody. Yeah, we're a Christian school, you know, and we, 
you know, we teach scripture. And, and I was just looking at um, a chapter in 1 Corinthians, it's chapter 12, talking about different parts of the body being members of the church. And in there, that verse, I think it's verse 22, it said, you know, for those members of the body that are weaker, unnecessary. And it wasn't until we had Tess here that I realised why or how important that was. He brought out empathy, he brought out compassion, he brought out thoughtfulness that our students have never really been given the opportunity to develop or express. Since his diagnosis, we have come across, even in Brisbane, so many young men and men, middle-aged men who have Duchenne's. And they are an inspiration because they do play um, you know, football, they play guitars, they're actors, they, some are married. I hope in my future that I may do social work and make, make a difference in people's lives and, and as well as make different people with life with, have living with living with bad conditions as well. To realize that for them that it's not the end and they can, and they, they can make a difference in positive and realize that, that being a disability, you can become more influenced, I reckon, than not having a disability, I reckon, from, 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 my, from my perspective. I believe that he can be a, a, a massive influence as he gets older on more communities. He's just another person who has a different way of having to live his life. Your disability doesn't make, make up who you are. What matters is inside.